Shane Stacks on the radio. Oh, yeah. I love that. Shall, shall, shall we play a game? Why, yes. I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Getting geeky in Little Rock, and also this week live in Little Rock, it's Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into the things we love. Uh, Thanks so much for joining. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. We're doing, uh, I think this is the third year in a row we've done this, Yes, and it's one of the, one of my most fun shows to do, and it's also one of the most popular shows we do. Uh, I'll get to that here in a second, but uh, just wanted to welcome all the listeners Whether you're listening uh, over the air on 101.1 FM, The Answer, or if you're listening uh, via the live stream at 101.1 FM, The Answer dot com, or if you're listening by podcast or on Krypton Radio or one of the other ways on YouTube, one of the other ways the show goes out after the broadcast, I'm just darn glad to have you in the the call in number. uh, If you're listening live on, I think today's the 25th. Yes. If you're listening on Saturday, January 25th at 1 p.m. Central. You can call in at 501-823-0965. That's 501-823-0965. Or you can tweet me at Shane Plays, S-H-A-N-E-P-L-A-Y-S. Now, with no further ado, this is, I think it's the third annual. I went back and checked, and it's actually the fourth time we've done this annual top anticipated geek movies countdown with Dave. Most, we're going to count down with uh, my mentor and radio and friend. Um, honored What's to be happening? A, well, it's Dave Ellswick, the man himself. I am here. Yes, this is, uh, I have the pleasure of broadcasting from his studio, and Dave is responsible for better or for worse for me being in radio. So it's he's, he's a really cool guy. Uh, he's a Little Rock legend on the radio. He's also been in radio for 50 years uh, even as far back, he did some. Uh, you were with Armed Forces Radio, weren't yeah. you? In the in the Arm, in the Air Force, yeah, Armed Forces yeah. Radio. I was nineteen seventy seven with him. So fifty years in radio, celebrated last year. Dave is a uh, political animal, but he's also a certified movie buff and geek. Oh, love movies. Yeah, I love movies. So you need to um, you need to check out uh, his show. It's Monday through Friday on one hundred one point one FM. And I just heard a big announcement. Why don't you? Why don't you share yeah, it's that? Cha- uh, my time. I since I I've, I've been in Little Rock for almost twenty years now, and uh, I've done afternoon drive basically. Right. Starting February third, I'll be doing mornings. Nice. Six A to nine A. We have that. There's been two things asked. That's of us. what we did with the uh, the morning jam was six to nine, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of people ask me. Have asked uh, that we come up with a morning show that's local and live and fun and you know deal with the issues of the day and things of that nature and so we're going to do that the other thing they ask is can you turn the power up well i can't turn the power up uh the fcc says no to that or they're going to charge me hundreds of thousands of dollars not me salem but uh, i i talked with the bosses they said would you like to do mornings i said sure i'll do it as a host I'd like to stay in afternoons, but as a former program director, I know that as the morning goes, so does the rest of the station. Mm. So let's go do mornings. This is probably one of the few, if only, conservative talk radio shows out there. Real that, that, conservative. That also has a geek show. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Well, we also, on your show, which people would probably uh, call a conservative talk show, you do geeky stuff a lot. Oh, a lot. We have a lot yeah. of fun. So, I do. I talk. Yeah. Yesterday, Robert Steinbach and Chris Corbett were on, and we ended up last 30 minutes talking movies. Yeah, you never know. So, okay. And, and a lot ahead. of times you'll do Geek Friday. But okay, anyway, so welcome back, Dave Ellswick. And what we're going to do is we're counting down our most anticipated geek movies of 2020. All right? We've done this several years in a row now. Do you I've, still have the list from last year? I've got last year's list okay. right here. That's absolutely a must. I like to go over that before we give our picks. And what we do is we pick our top five geek movies. And then because it's so hard to narrow it down, we do an honorable mention. Just just to let off, or honorable mentions, mentions. or whatever. Yeah. So whatever, you know, because it's, it's so hard uh, to narrow this stuff down. There's also, so many good movies coming out. Yeah, this year's really going to be 
above average. Well, what saves me is I say I have to see it in the theater. Yeah, that's the only possible way I can narrow this list down because there's there a lot go. of movies I want to see, but I'll I'll watch them on video. Zach, uh, I just want to double check before uh, I say, are we on the Facebook stream? Okay. So also, if you go to the Dave Ellswick Show Facebook page, yes, we're there. The uh, the video, uh, the live video from inside the studio is streaming, but don't go, don't go to Shane Plays. Go to the Dave Ellswick Show because that's how the studio is set up to broadcast. So anyway, all right, here we go. Let's just go ahead, Dave. Okay. And and let's look at it's what we show. did last year. I just follow along. Yeah. So weird. I was telling Kim Hammer uh, when he was leaving. It's always so weird for me to be in this seat, and and you're in the other seat. But so be it. So um, anyway, okay. Last year for 2019. All right. And again, this isn't a prediction of movies that we necessarily think will be a huge box office success. Or even critically popular. This is just stuff that, you know, we want to watch for whatever reason. Okay? okay. Some of it might be because we think it'll be a big smash. Uh-huh. Uh, but some of it's like, this is just what I want to see. Now, last year, here was Dave's top five. Hit it. Number five was It Chapter Two. two. So how did that stack up for you, Dave? Did it was that, good. Okay. So it that, was good. I, I enjoyed it. Okay. Uh Un- number four, you had Untitled Terminator movie. Great movie. It was Dark Fate. I enjoyed the heck out of I it. I still haven't seen it. I it's great. To. All right. Uh, do you feel like that it kind of got back to Terminator yes, 1 and 2? absolutely. Okay. Well, it was a direct a direct a sequel to 2. Was it? Yes. Okay. Well, that's cool. So they're doing that a lot these days with franchises. It's they're, like Halloween. Yeah. They did Halloween. They just forgot about all the other crappy movies that yeah. they made <laughs> and, and i don't want to know yet but i'm guessing that halloween kills might be on your list so for this year because you're a huge huge halloween fan. halloween fan so um all right and then you had at number three you had avengers endgame okay how did that stack up now I, that was a good movie okay i liked it a lot uh number two you had john wick three parabellum i loved that movie those movies are so insane the, the whole thing with the knives, because yeah. they brought knives in this time, and yeah. I loved it. Yeah, well, he's also, you see more of the of the underworld, whatever they call it, and Zach's in there nodding his head. And then also, you see a little bit more of his character. Every now and then, he'll leave somebody alive, Yeah, if he respects them yeah. or whatever. By you know? the way, the, my yeah. one of my favorite parts in that whole movie is the Iron Chef guy is in it. Oh, is he? I didn't even realize yeah. that. Is that those two guys that are fine that let him keep getting back up? No, oh, okay. Yeah, he's a different guy. Yeah, it's, but he's really a good martial artist, and their final fight is really is very, very. Oh, great. is that the fight in the in the glass? Yes, uh, through all the glass. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and and I'm looking forward to John Wick Four. My prediction is, and I don't know. I'm speculating. Yeah. Because. Uh, Oh, what's that guy's name? Um, the Lord, guy that runs Lawrence Fishburne. Well, you got Lawrence Fishburne, who's quite angry at the high table. Yeah, and then who's the guy that runs the Continental? Um, Are you talking about Swearjen from uh, Deadwood? Yeah, him. <laughs> I can't remember his name. It's escaping Ian me. Ian something. Yeah, Black. Some. I don't know. Anyway, he shot John Wick. Ian McShane. Ian McShane shot John Wick. Sent him over the roof. I think that was all a setup to I get agree. him. With Lawrence Fishburne, so that all three of them can go after the high table. I totally agree. We'll see. That's that's my take. We'll, but it's, we'll see. My favorite line. Yeah. Out of uh, Parabellum. I just need to catch my breath. Yeah, I just need to catch my breath. Yeah. <laughs> well, Such I love the guys that are movie. fighting him and they respect him, so they let him keep getting back up. Yeah. So that that they can keep knife fighting. Yeah. So wonderful series. It's. You know, a lot of times franchises like that get worse as they go along. It just actually gets better because it's showing you more of the... 2020 is going to be the yeah. year of Keanu Reeves. Well, here's the other thing. John Wick 1, 2, and 3 have all happened in one week yes. of, of lifetime or, yes. you know, time or whatever. So anyway, all right, moving on. And then number one... The number one movie I was looking for was had to be Godzilla, Godzilla King, and King of the Monsters, the movie that we almost got thrown out of the silver screen <laughs> theater in Cabot because we I couldn't were cheering so loud. <laughs> it was a great movie. Great movie. Yeah, great movie. I've been watching Godzilla movies with my son at home. So, uh, all right. And then you had some guilty pleasures. You had okay. Toy Story 4. Yeah, great Beach, movie. Beach Bum, 
happy birthday to you uh, in Zombieland 2. You know, I didn't see those last three movies. Did you not? I did not. Well, they get were a guilt. Chance. They weren't necessarily. You were just like, ah, these are you know stuff I want to mention. Yeah, I didn't get to see Double Tap. I wanted to see it. That's, it's it's that's, on Redbox now. I saw oh, that it's it? on Redbox. Okay. Yeah, I'll pick it up. And then uh, Ram- and then your honorable mentions were Rambo Five and yes. Star Wars Episode Nine. Of course. So how did those movies turn? I out like. For? I to be honest, I like Star Wars Nine more than I thought I would, yeah. and I thought it, I loved the ending of it. A lot of people didn't. I did. I thought it was the perfect ending I to, it. Yeah. to uh, you know, new beginning, as they call it now. So, uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed that. And Rambo 9, or Rambo 9, Rambo, Rambo was great. Rambo 5. 5, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, it was exactly a Rambo movie. It's what you wanted. And boy, the yeah. politically incorrect crowd Let did guess. not like it. Let me guess. They said it was problematic. Uh, they didn't like it. Yeah, okay. Let's we'll just, just put that. that. They yeah. thought it was definitely what, against uh, well, Hispanics. Well, what do you expect going into a Rambo movie? I mean, they're not going to tread lightly. And they're, what do you think when he's going to take on the cartels? Right. He's, they're not going to make them Asian. Right. Well, here's <laughs> the other thing that, and I, I don't want to get too politically charged or whatever, you can go. You can go after the cartels without saying that all people that live in Mexico are bad. Well, he doesn't say that, right? It's just like if you go after the mob, it's not like saying that every American is bad or not every Italian, right? I mean, it's it doesn't work that way. That's right. Yeah. Anyway, all right. So, and it's cool. it's, it's it's fantasy. It's escapism. Okay. So, so, who did you have? I had my top five. Number five was Brightburn. And that was the sort of evil Superman movie. It was okay. It was. I enjoyed it. Uh, I they could have done more with it. Well, it would have been a better movie if they stopped putting him in a mask and have him in the shadows. They were trying to make a slasher movie out of it, but it didn't work because you already knew that he was like this all-powerful Superman kid. Yeah. So I think that the horror was inherent in the premise that the super-powerful kid was going bad, not in the sneaking around in the shadows. Have you seen The Boys on Amazon? <laughs> It's Garth Ennis wrote the comic book, so I know that the TV show is over the top. Oh, it's over it's the top. Yeah. Umbrella Academy Woo. is good. I've been watching some Umbrella yeah, Academy. That's a wacky show. Yeah, Sheila likes that too. We need to get back to that. Okay, I had Godzilla King of the Monsters at number four. Wow. Uh, which, probably, in retrospect, I would have bumped it up higher. Uh, but there was some other stuff I really. Avengers Endgame. Mm-hmm. Uh, we both had that at number three. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I thought it lived up. I mean, I don't know how you put a finale on the first three phases of the Marvel movies better than they did. I agree. Everybody yeah. was there. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, everybody's like, yeah, you got them on there. And then number two, I had Glass. And that's a huge movie that's good for me. Because because it was because a good movie. I love the the Shyamalan, like, superhero verse. Well, not quite super. They're super, they're super, but they're not comic book super. Right, right. right? And you've had, you've had Unbreakable, you had Split, and you had Glass. And I loved every minute of Glass. Glass was excellent. Yeah, I was like, David Dunn! I mean, I loved David Dunn as a character. Just a regular guy. Who's, uh, he's like, in the real world, it's like, what if you discovered you had super strength in the real world? Mm-hmm. And he's trying to help out. Yep. You know? He's and, trying to do good. Yeah, I loved it. Uh, Glass, and then, not so much. And then, What's that? Glass, not so much. You didn't like Glass? I didn't oh, like Glass, the character, the character yeah. of Glass. Yeah, Mr. Glass. Yeah. Yeah, no, not so much. I liked, I liked the movie. Yeah, is fantastic. And McElroy was really good in it too. He, he's he's stunningly amazing. Um, and then number one, I, I had Star Wars Episode Nine only because I mean, after, I've got it. You after know, forty two yeah, years, putting that putting that period <laughs> on it. Uh, honorable mentions: I had Ford versus Ferrari. That was a great movie. Going to be up for Academy Award. And then Cats. And I, I just I'm sad that Cats has evident is evidently a big pile of whatever. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm still going to watch it on video. And and, it, uh, and is that had, the only thing ter- Taylor Swift has ever done that just tanked? I don't know. I'm I'm just wondering. I have no idea. I mean, there she, were a lot of big names associated with it. So huge. Yeah, I mean, just think. You know, they counter they counter programmed it for one of a better word against Star Wars. I guess they were like, well, the people don't want Star Wars. We'll give them an alter, and it just. It just tanked. Did six million dollars first? Yeah, week. it did. That it was tanked. Ugly. But I'll say again, I like. The I've seen it live twice, and it's got some great music, and it's based on T.S. Eliot's Practical yeah. Book of Cats, which is a fun book of poems. And but anyway, so that was last year. Yes, yes, we will get. But to, this is this year. This is this year. <laughs> and before we move into that, we got to banter with Zach a little bit. Okay, my, Zach's my man. 
And the head of my news team, Sal, it's not Sal, but it's his grandmother and her dog, Muffin. They get upset with me if I don't banter with Zach. They love him some Zach, Dave. All right. They well, love him some Zach's Zach. Zach's a special dude. Yeah. Yeah, he sure is. Hey, Zach. Purple eyes. He's the man. Purple eyes? Does You talk to him about it. Okay. Purple eyes? God. What's this about? <laughs> All right. Duck. What's this about, Zach? It's purple just- it's just a nickname that Doug gave me. Yeah. He started just calling me Purple Eyes for whatever reason. And Doug? I'm trying to think of who Duck. 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 Oh. From the car I truck. The Duck. Oh, okay. Purple Eyes. Yeah. All right. Don't know where it came from. Yeah. Well, there it is. He just came up with it. I don't know how he did, but he did. All right. Well, there you go. Well, Zach, uh, <laughs> I, you know, we talked last week. The Mobley Detective Agency is hot on the case, uh, you know, making sure everything's okay with you and this girlfriend situation. So we covered that last week. Dave, you know that Zach has a girlfriend, right? Yeah, he's going out with a liberal. What? That you know, how else? And he's hearts trying, and minds. And he's Dave. talking to me about it, and I'm just looking at him going, Ooh, buddy. <laughs> hey, love. Love, love Star is blind. Cross for all lovers. Talk about uh there's a movie coming out this year called West Side Story. There <laughs> he we go. Talked about that. Yeah, there mm-hmm. we go. So the Mobley Detective Agency's hot on that. Um I do, you know, I don't think I, I probably ask you this before, Zach, and I've completely forgotten. Are you a Star Trek guy or not? I am not, but I just, like I said, I enjoy the J.J. Abrams films. Okay, mm-hmm. because there's, uh, the big news is that on CBS All Access, the new Picard series is now streaming, which right. is like. I'm thinking about just becoming a CBS person just so i can watch it sure but i gotta wait till it comes all out a so lot of people are doing down. that mm-hmm. you know a lot of people are doing that uh i so far i i haven't found their their current star trek compelling enough to Discovery. subscribe mm-hmm. but yeah i mean i might after a few episodes get out because it's got data in it i love data or at least it looks like it's got data could be the character of b4 um it's got seven of nine uh you know it's got picard uh, and it's also got, uh, they just announced uh, that Whoopi Goldberg is returning as Guinan for season two. Now, uh, Guinan was a great character on The Next Generation. She was this sort of telepathic bartender, counselor type person, and she was a great character. So that'll, that'll be interesting. It's not, it's not like they're on the Enterprise. It's, it's, it's Card almost doing like a, renegade type situation i don't know it's almost like a civilian ship or so i don't know exactly what's going on so and then uh this will this will probably mean more to dave than you zach but uh terry jones of monty python just passed I away i saw that yeah and terry jones was uh he directed was it the, the life of Bri- i can't remember i think he directed life of brian I'm not sure he directed life of brian he was one of the main Monty Python people. Uh, he and was it, one of the main writers. Right. I mean, he was the core. core Him, Palin, and Cleese did most of the writing. Right. And yeah, and the core, if you want to say the Beatles of Monty Python, was uh, Cleese, Palin, Idol, Chapman, mm-hmm. and Jones. Yeah, that's it. Right. The five. Uh, and I was trying to think of somebody else because Cleese, John Cleese, when, when, when Terry Jones' death was announced, uh, he said two down, four to go. So I'm trying to think of who that other person would be. But uh, but anyway, pretty sure like Life of Brian is one of uh, Monty Python's more famous movies. Uh, and it's an absurd farce about it's funny. I don't agree with the theology, but it's it's funny that these people follow Brian around uh, almost like he's Jesus. And it, and it gets all this confused theology and stuff. But it, but it's it's funny because it's Monty Python. Uh and he directed that and did, and did many, many other things. So there we go. Terry, Terry Jones is gone. So, mm. uh, Zach, have you, have you seen anything or movies, TV, anything that, that you're, you're hyped about right now? Well, see, I just saw The Gentleman last night. Now, The Gentleman is the one that has uh, Matthew McConaughey. Yes, Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm also Hunter. Hugh Grant. Kid, yeah. Hugh Grant, who was the best. Oh, my gosh. He was fantastic. He was really good. The movie was great. Okay. It was. Well, I'm getting confused because there's two movies. There's The Gentleman, and then there's another movie that's kind of a prequel to... Um, okay. Uh, what's the the super slick... Like, they had the huge fight in the church. Um, 
they're like they're like spies or something, but they look like gentlemen. And they, what am I thinking of? Oh, you're, you're talking about the one that's got. Uh, they've done two. Right. They've done a two. Third one coming. Right. Uh, I know. I know what you're. Yeah, talking I can't about. think of it off the okay. top of my head, but it's a super stylistic, super violent. It's a takeoff on James Bond. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's it's like James Bond meets the Avengers, but Is it Colin. Firth, Firth or something, is yeah. The head of the group. Remember, he he had amnesia oh, in the last one. You know what I'm talking one. about. Yeah, They've got this movie. crazy fight in a church in the first one. It's yeah. Sam Jackson's in the first one, and they blow the church up. Right. Yeah. That, it, I know the, so the gentleman is not the prequel, it right? Because there's that. a movie coming no. out. In the, okay. All right. Totally anyway, different. this mm-hmm. is a new Guy Ritchie movie. Uh, looking back on England, where you know the super rich are the people who are using people that aren't so rich to enrich themselves even okay. more all right <laughs> well, a, is that a is that a pretty good way of explaining it uh zach i would say so okay mm-hmm. all righty okay so the gentleman was good so the movies i was trying to remember and i'm sure there's people out there listening practically chewing their lips off like how can you not remember the name are the kingsman movies of course there was kingsman the Secret Service in 2014, that's the one that had the crazy church scene. Kingsman, The Golden Circle, which came out in 2017. And then Kingsman, what well, just says The King's Man, not Kingsman, The King's Man, just The King's Man comes out in 2020. So I guess The King's Man and The Gentleman got confused in my head. But in general, as we all know, anybody who listens to this show, I you know, confusion is nothing new for Shane Place. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and get us to a break. We get back. We're going to count down Dave Ellswick and I, the man himself, Dave Ellswick. We will count down our top five okay. most anticipated geek movies of 2020. So go ahead and get us to a break, Zach. Comic book lovers, visit the wildstars.com today. today. From the mind of author and comic book industry expert Michael Tierney, it's not just a comic book, it's a comic book novel. The Wild Stars is sci fi and so much more. Learn the explanations behind UFOs and space gods. This isn't the Twilight Zone, this is the region of the Milky Way galaxy known as the Wild Stars. We guarantee you've never read anything like it. The complete comic book novel took 20 years to tell, with one reviewer noting, the story of the Wild Stars stretches ambitiously across space and time, from small town murders to the destruction of planets, with every event given multiple layers of meaning. If you haven't read The Wild Stars, you're missing out. Visit thewildstars.com today. Are you a fan of thrilling adventure, daring suspense, and just a touch of romance? Kursova has you covered. Since 2016, Kursova has been publishing the very best in contemporary fantasy and science fiction, retro pulp, and for you D&D gamers, Appendix N style fiction. Based in Little Rock, you can pick up their flagship magazine locally or at Michael Tierney's The Comic Book Store on Treasure Hill Road or Collector's Edition on JFK in North Little Rock. Swing by one of Michael's stores and pick up an issue or find them on Amazon. C I R S O V A. Not doesn't start with a K, it starts with a C. C I R S O V A Cursova magazine. Check them out today. You want to go ahead and throw out some love to Game Goblins. Some goblins are your friends. Game Goblins is Central Arkansas's premier retailer of Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40k, board games, card games, RPGs, miniatures, and hobby accessories. Call Game Goblins at 501 224 Game. Or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. That's 501-224-GAME or GameGoblins.com. Conveniently located 1121 South Bowman, right on the corner of Bowman and Canis in West Little Rock, and staffed by friendly employees, Game Goblins has expanded their store size, and there's plenty of room for exciting inventory and tables for play space. You'll like that space because Game Goblins has gaming events every day of the week. For all of your gaming needs, I heartily recommend Game Goblins. Make sure to check out their customer loyalty program that rewards you based on your actual purchases. Game Goblins earns your business and keeps it. First time customers mention Shane Plays and receive $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. 
tell them the Shane Place sent you. And folks, if you do visit any of my sponsors, please tell them that you hear about them on the show. That helps them know uh, that their advertising money and the relationship we've built is, is time and money well spent. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash Shane Plays. Shane Stacks on the radio. Oh, yeah. I love that. Okay, here we go. We're back. Oh, yeah. I Uh, like that. Oh, yeah. I love that. So, I do love that. Russ did that for me just sort of spontaneously. And we, we happen to get it on, get it recorded. So um, anyway, uh, welcome back to Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into the things we love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. The uh, phone number is 501-823-0965. Uh, and we're Dave Ellswick and I, the man himself, Dave Ellswick and I, we're do, we have an annual show that I love doing and is one of the more popular I shows. I enjoy it too. Yeah. It's, and I, I mean, love, I come back. You do. I love it. Uh and we just counted down before the break our last year's picks and how they stood up. And we're about to do our uh, top five-ish. We always cheat a little bit. Yeah, uh, you have mo- to. Yeah, most anticipated geek movies of 2020. Okay, how are we going to do this? You're going. I'm going to do five. You're going to do number no, five. No, we'll four. alternate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. We'll alternate from the bottom up. So, and again. There are so many great movies out there, it's hard to narrow this down. So this isn't necessarily a prediction of movies we think will be huge or popular or make a lot of money. I they, will we, say all five of mine will be huge at the box office. All right. And that's fine. Uh, I mean, some of mine will too, but that, it doesn't necessarily mean that's the criteria. It's just that's like correct. We, we want to go, for whatever reason, we want to go see these movies in the theater. So in my personal criteria... Must be key. And, and Dave may want to see it on video. I don't know. But in order to do my list, I had to say it has to be in the theater. There okay. was a, that was the only way I could break it down. Uh, must be geeky. And geeky is a loose definition. Uh, must be slated to release in 2020. Might push back later, but currently slated for 2020. And I must want to see it in the theater. All that, right. That's my criteria. So you want to go first? Uh, yeah, I can go first. What's number five. Number five is uh, Wonder Woman 1984. Oh, yeah. I think that's going to be a really fun movie. You know, everybody was, I think, pleasantly surprised with how good the first Wonder Woman was. And now you take that and you mesh it with that 80s nostalgia vibe that's going on right now. Yeah, you, know, you got the same major character. You yeah. have the same director. And Linda Carter is making a cameo. Right. Oh, is she? Yes. Fantastic. So... And it's got and and uh, somehow, oh, I, I can't. But Chris Pine as He's coming back as a, a oh, boyfriend, Captain, not trainer, Trevor, Steve Trevor. Uh, so we'll because you know, of course, at the end of the first one, you thought he died in the big plane explosion. The boom, kaboom. So he's going to be back somehow, uh, and and I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a good, fun superhero movie. Uh, you know, DC's finally kind of figuring things out. Aquaman was a lot of fun. Wonder Woman was a lot of fun. I have no desire whatsoever to see Harley Quinn and the Emancipation. I'm going to go see it. Are you? Yeah. Just just for the fun of it? Yep. or okay. Just for the fun of it. Well, I just, it's just not try, grabbing. Try not let my head get full of mush. Yeah, we'll see. I just, it's not grabbing me. I don't know. And it's not because, I don't know. There's some other superhero movies coming out this year that aren't grabbing me either. So it's not just the Harley Quinn thing, but... What I've seen so far of Harley Quinn has not grabbed me. All right. Other than the hyena laughing in the bathtub. I love that. Yeah, that was That's great. her dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, in the cartoon, in the cartoon, uh, she has two Well, the Joker had two hyenas that kind of became her hyenas or oh, something. Okay. But we, are, I, I do want to give a quick shout out. Eric Parker on the Facebook video stream pointed out that Graham Chapman is the other yes. uh Python member, Monty Python, Monty Python's Flying Circus, et cetera. He was the one who did most of the visuals. Yeah. Well, that was, yeah, you got Graham Chapman. Uh, then you got John Cleese. Mm-hmm. Terry Gilliam, that's who oh, I Gil- forgot. Yeah, Gilliam. I forgot Terry Gilliam as when I was trying to figure out who the, the sixth was. Uh, then you had Terry Jones, uh, Michael Palin, and, or Palin, and then, you know, Eric but Gilliam Idle. did most of the Flying Circus stuff. He uh, wasn't much... He wasn't really heavily in their movies, was he? Well, he 
I think he did some of the animated stuff. He was involved with Monty Python or Python, yeah. however you want to say it. If they'll, they'll, they call themselves Python. Uh, and, and then he went on to direct like crazy movies like uh, uh, Baron Mount, Baron Mount, Munchausen and Brazil. And so anyway, that's my, one of my favorite movies. I love Brazil. Yeah, but the, he's considered one of the core. Yeah. So thanks, Eric. Thanks for the uh, appreciate it. the post there on on the Facebook video page. And I, I see uh, Eric posts a lot on your your shows. Yeah, yeah especially when talking about movies and stuff. So okay. So, so number five is Wonder Woman, nineteen eighty four, for you. And yes, sir. You want to know what mine is? Yes. Die another day. Ah, uh, the Bond, Bond movie. James yeah. Bond, final yeah. one from uh, from Daniel Craig. Sam Mendes is back as the director. Uh huh. I'm I'm just. You're, he you're, did Skyfall, which is one of my favorite Bond movies of all time. I'm just telling you, I think this is going to be just over the top. Cool. Well, it's the last couple have been great. Yeah, they they're they, Daniel Craig's a great Bond. They're they're managing to tell modern movies, but they still have some of those wacky Bond elements. Yeah, but they don't feel wacky and cheesy. Well, so, I'm going to just say Daniel yeah. Craig in my mind. And look, I've been watching Bond since Bond started. Right. right? I was at, I was in I was there the second day that Doctor No was at the theater. But the bottom line is, him and Sean Connery tied for number one, best Bonds ever. I think as far as Bond was intended by the author Ian, Ian Fleming, I think Craig wins. As no, I far don't think as so. you don't think so? No, I think I think Connery is he okay. was picked. By was Ian he Fleming, yes. okay? Well, there you go. Uh, and and then you now, like when I was a kid growing up, Roger Moore was my favorite, but now I look back and go, like, that was a weird phase in the Bond movies, they almost became like comic silly, booky, yeah, yeah, they almost silly, became comic. silly phase. I like Roger Moore though, and I like him in The Saint and all that. The most, the biggest disappointment for me for Bond because I when I'd watch Remington Steel, I was like, this guy should Pierce be Bond. Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan didn't just didn't really work real well as as Bond. I believe Timothy Hutton. Yeah. Or not Hutton. Dalton, Dalton didn't get a fair shot. I don't think so either. He was good. He only got like one or two movies, He's right? Two. Two? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. All right. So your number five is Die Another Day. Yes. Where uh, what I'm hearing is it's possible that he's retired Somebody else now has this 007. It will not be a woman. Yeah. And then the Brock Coley's have said, yeah, next bond is not, not a, a woman. woman. Well, but he comes back and gets his code name back. Mm-hmm. So that's how that character, that other character is in there. Da, so. da, da, yeah, da, 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 da. Gotta love, I love the music. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's Iconic. A good bond movie is, is hard to beat. So, all right. My number four. All right. Is Dune. Okay. All right. I'm, I, 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 it's kind of like, they keep trying to make movies and miniseries out of it, and they can't quite do it because uh, it's such. A, it's a really hard story to adapt, to be quite honest, especially in two it's a two hours. Complex book. It's very complex, but this has a lot of big names attached to it. Yeah, looks like a lot of. I'm going to give it a shot. I, I want to see. This is a movie I want to see on the big. You got to see it on the big screen. Right? If you've seen the trailer, yeah, that trailer is going to be awesome just on the big screen. Right. So yeah, I want I want to see it on the big screen. So, uh, so definitely Dune. And by the way, uh, I'll mind up with the dates. Wonder Woman 1984 is set for June 5th, and uh, Dune is set for December 18th. I'm not sure when Die Another Day. Uh, I thought I had it written down on here on my own. It's coming out in May. Is I it May? Believe. Okay. Put that I on. wanted to tell you that Wonder Woman was in my top five, but I told you I made some changes early this morning, and it fell out of my top it's, five to make room for another movie. It's easy to do that. Yeah. yeah. I, I write a list of, I, I come up with a big list, and then I sleep on that, and then I narrow it down to five or whatever, and then I have to think about that further. So, yeah. Uh, all right. So what what is your number four there, Big This Dave? is where I took Wonder Woman out. Oh, wow. And I place Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun Maverick. I'm really excited about this movie. Everything I've seen about it and read about it sounds like it's going to be great. I just hope that they capture the feel. Of and there's going to be another volleyball game. Is there really? Yes. So it's not going to be like <laughs> Tom Cruise and Val Kilmer no. with like with Ben Gay on and all that, no. right? No. no. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the the one of the most famous beefcake scenes in, in all of moviedom. I'm excited because I, I when I was doing my research for this show, 
Val Kilmer is coming back as the Iceman. And he has slimmed down and he looks Does great. He? But I feel like from the original Top Gun, mm-hmm. I've always felt this. Uh, even though why the way they wrote, wrote the script, Iceman was an antagonist against Maverick. Always. But Iceman was actually a great guy because he he like he was like trying to do the right thing to keep people from getting killed. And then when Iceman was up there in that dogfight with like three or four other planes mm-hmm. while Maverick was seizing up whether he was gonna launch or not, Iceman was up there kicking butt. Yeah. So I've always loved Iceman. Yeah, I like Val Kilmer. I yeah. think he's a great actor. But he was like, You're dangerous, and he was right. He was yeah. Maverick is dangerous. Yeah. But, but you know, you gotta have antagonists. You have to have Tom conflict. Tom Cruise is yeah. the most dangerous. Yeah. Because he'll do things that no other pilot would do. Well, even they try. even show in the trailer for Maverick that he's taking those guys out for training. Yeah. And he flies up in between them <laughs> on purpose to put yeah. them in a spin. Yeah. You know, freak so, them out. Yeah. It, was, so. it looks great. Yeah, he's like I he's like, I'm surprised by the invitation yes. to come back. He's like, those are called orders. Mm. So all right. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be fun number right? three is Num- what number three bill and ted face the music yeah that's I, gonna be fun i i'm a huge bill and ted fan but we've got two major characters that are missing uh george carlin yeah I'm trying to think of who the, the other guy is. played death well, but I think they're having somebody like him come. Well, they have somebody play somebody his, like him, yeah, but not li- like hear, having yeah. him. So the character, but the the actor. Same I thing with yeah, Carlin. Hard to replace Carlin. I, if it were me, I wouldn't even try to replace Carlin. No. Uh, I think you could still somewhat do the death character, but I would not even try to. Uh, Rufus is yeah. Carlin's character, uh, the guy that kind of helped them in, in both of their previous movies. The, the, I don't and, have that in my top five, but I got my fingers crossed that it's good. Bill and Ted is a very important movie to me. It came out when I was in high school. The book, the, the, the textbook in the first Bill and Ted movie that they use is the same textbook I had in history. <laughs> Our history teacher showed us the movie. I mean, it's just, and, and, and I, you know, Bill and Ted's bogus journey. At first, I didn't like it because it was so different from the first one. But over time, I've come to appreciate what it was trying to do. I just love the characters of Bill and Ted. And at first, it was like their daughters were going to be in, are in it. And I was afraid that it was like they were going to be in like five minutes of the movie and it was all going to be about their daughters. But evidently, it's not. So, Smart. Yeah. So And it's the same screenwriters and I believe the same director. But definitely, oh, the, same, cool. definitely the same screenwriters. So I have high hopes for this movie so that's your number three. that's my number three my number three was your number four ah, dune dune which is my all-time favorite science fiction book series i did not know that i've read multiple times all six books i've only i think i've read like the first three because at okay, one so point dune, his dune son took Isle. over right yeah. didn't his son take over yeah, at the end yeah so how does frank the, herbert I mean, it's we we're we're way out of the spoiler zone. How does it all end up turning out after those six books? It's just a whole political intrigue yeah. thing. So, is there a Duncan Idaho all the way up through the sixth book? Because Not, they keep no. cloning him, and after a while, he's like an appliance. He's like, <laughs> he's like, this is my Duncan Idaho, and the other guy's like, well, that's your Duncan Idaho. You know, Dune so. is is one of my favorite books. I've been so disappointed every time they've tried to bring it to the big screen. And I understand the problem with Dune is that there's so much self-conversation in the book. What I mean by that, it's happening in people's minds. Yeah. That that's hard to do on the big screen. Well, I'll tell you, it's such it's such powerful writing. And Frank Herbert wrote it after like going to the Middle East and studying the cultures and the ecology of the desert and all that. But I actually, at times in my life, when I'm dealing with situations, I've actually calmed myself down by saying fear is the mind killer. I mean, it's powerful writing. You know, mm-hmm. it really is. I, I I wonder a lot, like, if my hand was stuck in that box where the, where the, where it's peeling back because mm-hmm. of flame, I'm like, I, I don't think I would yeah. survive that. So, anyway. G. Gordon so, Liddy could do that. You think so? Yes. He's the man. He could handle it. <laughs> okay. So, your number three is Dune. Yes. All right. My number two... I suspect might be your number one, and that's Godzilla versus King okay. Kong. 
All right, that's my Very number cool. two. Godzilla versus King Kong. Now, uh, wait a second. You got the title wrong. It's just Godzilla, Godzilla versus, versus Kong. Kong. Yeah, I wrote down King. Yeah, Godzilla versus Kong. Because right now, Godzilla is the king of the monsters, but yeah. he well, hasn't got into, he hasn't had his nose bloodied yet by Kong. By Kong. So here's the thing. <laughs> If you watch the end of King of the Monsters, mm-hmm. they have a montage of newspapers and news reports and this and that that show very clearly that after all the monsters come and bow to Godzilla yeah. at the end of the movie, that a lot of the mammal-based titans are, are headed to, to Skull, Skull Island. Island. That's right? right. And Kong was not in Godzilla King of the Monsters. And they show a picture of of kong and godzilla getting it on yeah it's gonna be good yeah Yeah, it's gonna be good so uh you know and and if i remember right i was trying to think about this last night i haven't seen skull island in a while great movie but if i remember right i mean first of all kong in in the the new monster verse is a lot bigger than the original Kong. Four times bigger. He's huge. But didn't they also say in Skull Island that he was still a juvenile? Yes. Okay. Still growing. So who knows how big he's going to be? He's going to be as tall yeah. as Godzilla. As Godzilla. Was well, at 400 feet, isn't it? Right? It's about right Something there. like that. Yeah. yeah they, there's a there's a there's there's stuff out there that charts how he's, his size keeps changing. It was funny. We, we've been watching some of the newer Godzilla movies. And then I... He, uh, I've got a little Mecha Godzilla toy, and Justice was like, "I want to see a Mecha Godzilla movie," so I put on the 1974 mm-hmm. Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla, uh-huh. and when Godzilla shows up, he went, "Godzilla looks dumb because the the it's changed so much over the years, yes. right? When I was his age, that's what Godzilla looked like. Yeah, but yeah, I can see if you look at the modern Godzilla designs and compare it to." the 70s or the 60s i can see why you might think you know that. the big spoiler that's out there i don't i don't want to know okay okay no, you just brought it up i'll say well hold on i'm going to close my ears and, and you can tell zach the spoiler hold on spoiler alert spoiler warning dave ellswick's about to give a spoiler for the godzilla versus kong movie if you don't want to hear it skip ahead about 10 to 15 seconds after this footnote ends, which is ending pretty much right now. Mecha Godzilla is in this new movie. Did you hear me? I said Mecha Godzilla is in the new movie. Are you not listening, Zach? I've still got my yeah. ears plugged. Oh, he's I'm at, he wanted me to tell you. I just told you. I well, told the listeners you. heard. So yeah. listeners, hopefully the you knew spoiler That's what I'm coming. hearing. Now, that's yeah. what I've heard. Yeah. Good sources on it. I'm just telling you. Well, in the original Japanese, I've got it on DVD because that's the kind of dork I am. Uh, Godzilla versus King Kong, the sequ- because what they did to help Godzilla or King Kong be able to fight Godzilla was if he got hit by lightning or if he got hit with electricity, then it would make him stronger or yes. heal him. Uh, I don't know if they'll have to do anything like that in the new movie, but. You know, Godzilla's got atomic breath, but King Kong could pick up stuff and throw it, or, I mean, he could pick up a bridge and use it like a baseball bat. So, uh, so we'll see what happens. All right. What, what is your number two, Dave Ellsworth? One, a movie probably you've not looked into a lot yet. Christopher Nolan's Tenet. Tenet. Let's, let's pause and talk about this movie a little bit because I, I spent a lot of time considering this movie. And I can't wait there. The, the discussion, the assumptions, nobody really knows what's going to be in this movie, but it's like a secret agent or something that may or may not be able to rewind time a little bit. Well, they can definitely rewind. They can time. definitely yeah. rewind time. Well, they're trying to stop world war three through time travel. Yeah. Is that what the deal That's is? What the premise and, is. And, okay. And think about this because the title of the movie gives you, some insight into the movie. It's Tenet, T-E-N-E-T. E-T, right. Spell it backwards, Tenet, yeah, T-E-N-E-T. T-E-N, yeah, it's E-T. a palindrome. Forward right, or back. backward. Yeah. Th- that's going to give something away about this movie. Well, the title logo also has a T-E, and then it has a play symbol, almost like a YouTube yeah. play symbol or video play symbol, and then the E-T after that is backwards. Yes. So, again, you know, 
they're giving a lot of clues yeah. in the in the logo. And it's Christopher Nolan. It's Christopher Nolan. And like Steven Spielberg, I never I never bet against Christopher Nolan. Right. A I, lot a lot of people heard about Inception the first time said, Oh, that'd never work. One of the greatest movies ever made. Great movie. I like Inception. Uh that one will mess with your head. There's a lot yes, of cool concepts it in it. <laughs> Uh, although I, I recommend if people like that kind of thing to go watch, it's a low budget sci-fi movie called Primer that involves time travel. It's a travel. great movie as well, and, and that will that will mess with your head. Um, but yeah, Tenet, and, and another thing, Christopher Nolan is a he's not just a movie guy; he's a cinema guy. Mm-hmm. He shoots this stuff in seventy millimeter. He's doing he went, it this time, you know, filming in IMAX. Yeah, and you know, of course, we both love Dunkirk, uh, Memento. Memento is uh, one of my all time favorite movies. I watched a movie a long time ago after Memento. One of his first movies was called Following. I've seen that. And and it was about this guy who would just randomly pick people and follow them. Yes. Not for nefarious reasons. No. That was just kind of his hobby. And of course he gets into all some kinds craziness. Of stuff. Yeah. Kind but of now, a Hitchcockian type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um you know, anyway, I think I think that's a great pick. All right, my number one, Dave. Okay. There's no way that this wasn't going to be on my list. I'm a little surprised it's my number one, but Ghostbusters Afterlife. Okay. I'm a huge, 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 I can't stress enough, huge Ghostbusters nerd. This Ghostbusters was in my top 10. Was it? All it right. was number 10, in yep. fact. Uh, th- my, my trepidation with Ghostbusters is it looks like they're trying to take what works for Stranger Things and mix it with Ghostbusters. I'm a little, mm-hmm. you know, I've said before, I think uh, on we had a geek panel one time on your show recently, and uh, Mark Pellegrini was there, and we were talking about how, like, the city of New York is practically a character in the Ghostbusters movies, and they're in, in best I can tell in the trailers. We're going to in, Kansas, basically. Yeah, we're going to Kansas, so <laughs> we'll see. But I love Ghostbusters. It's Ivan Reitman's son. Yep. Uh, it, it looks like that he's trying to get back to the original, whatever. And 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 best I can tell, it's Egon's grandkids mm-hmm. find some stuff. Yep. So, anyway, I'm going to give it a chance. Ghostbusters Afterlife. Okay. Yep. So you were right about me. My number one movie, Godzilla versus Kong. Yes, sir. And we've already talked about it. Yes. We'll talk about. It. Two years in a row, Godzilla is number one in my book. Well, I'll, if we go see it together, mm, we will. I'll try not to hoop and holler if Mothra <laughs> shows up to fight Rodan. Well, you will hoop and holler if what yeah. I have heard is true with the character that shows up. Okay, l- let me tell you this: we got, we have to get our our. Pre- Who do you think is going to win? Or will they let somebody outright win? I believe Kong wins. Oh, dang! That hurts me, Dave. I'm sorry. I like Kong, but man, Godzilla. I think Kong will win. Now, so do you You don't think that they're going to do one of those, they both kind of won a little bit maneuvers? No. no. I think there's going to be a definite winner for a specific reason. Do you think, and see, I don't know, I'm staying away from spoilers and whatnot, but is it like, is it kind of like, Godzilla is a problem and Kong shows up to help? Or is, it, is Godzilla... I don't want to get into it. Okay. All right. A lot of stuff I've read because it's pretty interesting what this new director is trying to do. All right. I just hope they downplay a little bit of the Monarch organization. Oh, that's going to play a bigger part. Is it? Well, I'm talking about like that story where it was like, well, the mom was really a bad guy. And oh, no. you know, I, I yeah, just, that's not going to yeah, be I don't, that. Yeah, I don't want to, you know, it, it, all that stuff. I but just, the guy that had the happy face and last action hero yeah, right, on his eye, right, right. he's back. Right. I mean, that he's a good villain. Yeah. And you know, besides, he's yeah. got the Ghidorah head, or the Ghidorah head, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. So, uh, anyway, and, and by the way, uh, my son has established that Ghidorah is his favorite kaiju. Yeah. <laughs> I get crazy with the way the heads move. Yeah, they're like moving around. Yeah. Uh, all right, we got about five minutes here. Uh, although he also established, we were talking about Godzilla. Godzilla could beat Ghidorah. Godzilla could beat Godzilla, uh, and Godzilla could also beat five hundred Godzillas. Mm-hmm. So that was that's my son's take on on Godzilla. That's pretty cool. So I like yeah, he's that. six. He's six. That's he's good. perfect age, fun age. Okay. 
So I uh, here's my honorable mention. Yeah, yeah, the last the happy. Isn't it kind of scary that I've got that picture well, on my phone? It, it is scary. Dave's showing me a picture of the eyeball with a happy face in it from uh, Last Action Hero. I think I'm not saying the Last Action Hero is a great piece of it was art, fun. but it's a fun movie. Yeah, it catches. It was. I, it catches more crud than it deserves. Yes, I agree with that. You know, too. I mean, well, well, good grief! They painted the logo on the space shuttle. For advertising, I mean, you know, it, it, it. Anyway, okay. So, my honorable mention. How many? How many honorable mentions do you have? I have. Four. I just have one, but you can have. I've just, got four, and yeah, then I've got want, one that I. My dark horse. Your dark horse. All right. Yeah. My honorable mention is Black Widow, and okay. the reason I went with Black Widow is only because it's the first Marvel Phase Four movie. So I want to see how's okay. uh, how is Phase Four kicking off. You're not looking forward to the Flash. I didn't even see that on the... Ezra I, Miller is, is is the Flash. No list that I saw had it coming out this year. Yeah, that's what that I saw. That probably would have made my... That's fo- what I have it's seen. It's possible that would let have made me, the... Let me look again. Okay. Well, we've got... How much time we got left, Zach? Four? You got five minutes. Five minutes. All right. Um, and it says initial release 2020, but that's all. Okay. I haven't... I didn't see it. I, I went to several websites that were listing. Okay, now the one I'm looking at now says 2022. Okay. As so, Miller. What's interesting, and this is a bit of a spoiler, I haven't even seen it myself yet, but the CW every year does a big crossover with all their superhero properties, mm-hmm. and the Ezra Miller Flash showed up okay, because they're cool. from all these different Earths. Yeah. So that's I don't know in what context or anything. Okay. All right, Dave, let's get your honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. I've got four. Okay. Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It. It's going to yeah. be huge. Yeah. Wonder Woman 1984. Uh-huh. Halloween Killer and Quiet Place Part 2. So all four of those movies um was he had, he had Conjuring 3, Wonder Woman Quiet Place. What was the other one? Halloween. Killer. Halloween Kills. Okay. Uh, the reason those didn't make my list is because all four of those I will probably watch on video. You can. Yeah. Well, uh, I agree with that. Well, uh, well three. Wonder, Wonder Woman Wonder I'll Wonder see in a no. theater. But Conjuring 3, I traditionally, like there's Candyman the coming out. Oh, yeah. I can't wait yeah, to see that Yeah, there's Candyman. Either. There's Halloween Kills. There's Malignant. Tony Todd's back. Yeah. A quiet Place. There's all this stuff. But those are movies that I'll catch on video. And they're doing like a Fantasy Island movie that's evidently yeah, that's coming kind out of in just a, horror a few weeks. Mo- yeah, it's kind of a horror movie. Uh, but Tattoo's not there. How can you How ha- can you do it? I yeah. don't know. Well, you know who's doing Mr. Wark is uh, the guy that plays Ant-Man's buddy in the Marvel movies. Uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Pena? Pena? Yeah, that's Mr. Wark. So we'll see. Okay. Um, okay, so what's your dark horse? Steven Spielberg is coming back with a big hit, West Side Story. West Side Story, the musical, which we're both are sure is not going to be a cat. This will not be cats. <laughs> <laughs> I can can guarantee you that. And right. I'm, I'm, I mean, Rita Moreno is back. That's going to be cool. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. And the guy that played Baby Driver, Ansel. Yeah, I'm not sure what his name I is. I forget how you pronounce his last name. Something got. What a, uh, he's playing uh, the lead, male lead. So West Side Story has been a very famous musical. Uh, the movie adaptation in the was it the fifties or the sixties? Sixties was very popular, huge, and it's it's basically a modern retelling of uh, Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet. You've got two rival gangs, and you have a man and a woman. Whites, from, yeah, and Latinos, and Latinos. So and it's, it's going to resonate. I'm telling it's you, it's forbidden love, forbidden love. So anyway, well, those are some good picks, folks. I'd love, uh, you know, go to Shane plays uh, uh, the Twitter S H A N E P L A Y S. Out of time already? Yeah, we're pretty much out of wow. time. Yep. And uh, let me hear your your top picks for 2020. I forgot to throw out some show notes, so let me do that real quick. Um, that you know, you can always go to shameplays.com, S H A N E P L A Y S dot com uh, for cool content and archived shows. So it does go out as a podcast on the blog, iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, Podbean, SoundCloud, YouTube, and more. And last but never, ever, ever least, Shane Plays is carried on Krypton Radio. Krypton Radio is sci-fi for your Wi-Fi. Uh, Dave, thanks so much for coming in, man. Ellen, it's always it's a pleasure. It's my pleasure to talk this. I mean, right. seriously. Are you, guys, are you guys ready for the bad joke of the week? 
Yes. All right, here we go. Why was baby Superman the only kid at the playground? I have no idea. Zach, okay. The sign said supervision required. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. All right. That's good. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we will catch you next time on Shane Plays. Thanks again, Dave. John, that was a pretty good fight, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry about me, John. Just gotta catch my breath. I'll catch up to you, John. No, you won't. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash Shane Plays.